Hello, everyone out there in BookTube land, and welcome to this video. Zoe is not right there, so she will not be popping her head in, and made it abundantly clear that if I show her on camera, she will show me the door. And now she's walking away. Say hi, babe. Hi. Hi. Let's see. If I turn the camera just a little bit, we might be able to see a wild Zoe and her native habitat. Don't do it. Okay. We won't do it. Um, so, today we are going to be talking about, um, we meaning me, the royal we, talking about David Goodis's, um Black Friday. But before we do that, I want to talk a little bit about um, the Harry, Harry, Harry Whittington video that I did. Um, I was asking if anyone knew, like, why he never was as popular as he should have been. Um, in my opinion. So asking people to answer questions, in my opinion, is kind of weird. But um, I got a really good answer from Eric Peterson who said, um, how did he say it? Good God, did you guys hear that? Okay. <laughs> l l let me tell you a little bit about the humor of my wife. <laughs> When she plugs her phone in, a nice British chap comes on and says, Ow, my butt. Every time she plugs her phone in, it's really funny. And it scares us all the time. It's been happening for months. And we still get a little shock. Since I've been recording, I got another comment on that video. Let's see what it says. Duncan McCurdy said, I think Harry Winnington suffers the same stigma as a lot of the great paperback writers. Too prolific. That is actually very profound. I like that. That makes sense. Um, but Eric Peterson said that he fell out of favor. He thinks for the same reason a lot of his peers did. They didn't make the transition as a name writer into the 70s or 80s publishing market. And um, Eric, if you're watching this, let me know if this is what you mean. Because when I read that, I hear um, page counts going up so they could sell more paper uh, for higher price books. Um, that's always been my thought as to what the 80s and to an extent the late 70s completely did to paperbacks or just books in general. Like um, the average length of a little novel you could pick up, a little paperback at the shop or whatever, went from like... Um, 127 pages and then it jumped up to like 189 pages 190 pages um and then once the 80s hit um i think paperbacks most of them were like 300 and some odd pages some of them even going um as high up as like 425 pages um, and then it was just selling paper. Um, if anyone's watched this channel for any length of time, um, I, I yelled that from the rooftops that it was just selling books turned into being a paper salesman and whoever could sell the most pieces of paper on a pallet to a chain retailer, um, was the best seller and the publishers and the booksellers would push the biggest books size wise because they could charge the most for them and, um, made people think they were getting a great deal, getting this big fat giant book. Um, even if half the pages in it are fluff and, um, so 
the publishers decide who's going to be the next big bestseller and they tell the bookstores we will purchase your front tables and your store windows and your end caps if you push this stuff and um people have the ridiculous notion that um them buying books with their hard-earned money um dictates who the next bestseller is and that um, is rarely the case so a um, bit of a soapbox rant there but the other thing I was going to say um, was that today this morning um, Mark Richardson did a live stream with um, Steve Donahue and someone who I've never seen before uh, Jason has books now um, for those of you who don't know um, I have not been doing videos for, um, Zoe told me it's been about a year. So in that year, the things that I've noticed since coming back is that a lot of the people I used to watch don't make videos anymore. Um, some of the people I used to watch changed their channel name and it's taking me, um, time to find them again and um what seems to be more abundant is all these new booktube channels so i don't know if it has come up in the last year um that wow there's this you know because i remember like right before i left there were people making videos like is booktube dead does the community um cannibalize itself and all this other stuff um but in being in that stream today in the chat there were so many new people um that i saw and got to meet through the chat and um i've subbed to a bunch of them so hopefully um i'll really enjoy their channels because they all seemed really nice so um it was a lot of fun. Uh, there was one thing Steve said, and I think, if I remember correctly, it was Lonely Bookshelf asked a question. Why aren't people reading Gore Vidal, or how come more people aren't reading Gore Vidal? And Steve made the comment that he thinks it's because once an author dies... Um, the biggest advocate for that author themselves is not there shouting from the roof, rooftops that they're the best. Now, I totally paraphrase that. Those were not the words Steve used. But when you, when the author's not around anymore to remind everybody that they're around, um, sometimes they get forgotten. And so I was like, okay, let me see. Um, Harry Winnington, let's see. And so I checked, and he died in 89. But I really think he was already um, kind of forgotten about. The 80s were a weird period because there were small pockets of people who wanted to resurrect older stuff like older modern stuff, but the eighties were so like big and, um, boisterous and, uh, wealthy and, um, good economy and all this stuff that everyone just wanted new stuff. And there were so many advancements in a lot of different fields in the eighties, um, that, it's just one of those weird little snapshots in time where things were happening and it was after things that were bad happened. So like, you know, like the Vietnam war is over and, um, we're getting ready to make sure the cold war's done forever but we're also on the cusp of um the internet and um all this other stuff so the 80s were just like a really interesting time 
And um, I don't know if there were enough people who gave a shit about stuff from the past um, other than listening to the Stray Cats or watching Back to the Future, you know? So uh, it, it, it was a weird, it was a weird time. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, well, um, I kind of rambled. Oh, but what I wanted to say, too, about the BookTube, if you are new to BookTube in the last year, say hello and let me know when you started your channel and all that stuff. Um, if you have had a channel forever and you've changed your name in the last year and you're watching this, drop me a line in the comments saying, hey, my channel used to be doodly boodly boop and now it's blah da ba ba ba. Um, so I could go, ah. Um, and also, I don't know what an OGBG book haul is. And I'm like, I'm talking to Zoe and I'm like, I, I don't know the vernacular anymore. Like, BookTube has evolved so much that I don't understand anything that's going on. Um, there's just lots of stuff that's weird, and um, I need help. So, um, help me out. And um, so, David Goodis, since we're now very much into this video. Um, Black Friday... Um, by David Goodis. Now, I have not really read a lot of his stuff other than short stories. Um, kind of because, I, I don't know why, I just, I never gravitated toward it. But um, a lot of people swear by him. A lot of people who love noir and hard-boiled um, fiction really dig his stuff. And I don't know why I never went in on him. But when I saw this book, I'm like, oh, Black Friday. And then I'm like, oh, this must be what the Universal Black Friday movie um, the old team up with Boris Karloff and Bella Lugosi, where Bella Lugosi plays an Italian mobster. Um, I always thought, I'm like, oh yeah, that must be what that's based on or something like that. But then I was thinking about it, and I don't know the exact year this book came out, but I'm pretty sure the movie came out like 10 or 15 years maybe 10 years before this book came out. Um, would be my guess. So, um, I kind of threw that out, but this book was really strange. The spoiler is that I liked it. Um, I liked it a lot. Now there were problems that I had with it, but we'll get into those as I give you a brief synopsis of it. Um, basically there's this dude, Al Hart, who, um, when we first meet him, he's stealing a coat. He's in Philadelphia. It's winter. It's cold. Um, he wasn't dressed for the cold. Um, and he steals a coat from the shop and then goes and gets a beer somewhere cop comes up to him, he throws the beer in the cop's face, he takes off running, um, he's on the run, it's obvious at this point, and, um, just by good old dumb old-fashioned luck, he sees a body laying on the sidewalk, and he goes up to it, and, um, it's a dude who's been shot, um, in the head, he's dying, and, um, the guy's like mumbling, he's like, here, take this. I'd rather some stranger have it than them get their hands on it. And he takes this dude's wallet. And as he's taking the wallet, like bullets start whizzing by him. So he takes off. Um, people are chasing him. He hides in a bush. He opens the wallet and sees that there's like, I think $11,000 in it. Now, this is all first chapter stuff. I'm not, like, ruining anything for you here. So there's, like, $11,000 in it. 
he buries the cash in the dirt under the bushes where he's hiding while he hears the guys on the other side of the fence looking for him. And then he waits a little bit and then hops the fence and he's like, okay guys, what's, what's going on here? Like, I don't understand what the big deal is. He gets into a fight with the dudes. Um, they take the wallet from him. He messes one of the dudes up pretty bad. And then um, when they hear the cops whistle or sirens or whatever, they decide that they'll work together to get the guy that he just beat the crap out of back somewhere safe. Okay. Now, this is the first problem I have with this book because I would assume in a big city when there are gunshots and people running through the streets and bodies strewn that cops or witnesses or someone won't be that far behind. If he would have just stayed in that bush, book doesn't happen. There is no story, really. There is, but the main plot of the story would never happen and it would be a totally different book. So anyway, that, I'm like, ah, oh, he should have just stayed in the goddamn bush. That's, that's what you always say. Um... But so what this book is basically about is he's on the run for something else, gets caught up in this stuff with the body and this money, and he goes into this house that's like this family of crooks. Now, they're not like related. They're just a small band of bad guys, let's say. And the book is basically about the ethics and uh, whatnot of a crime family that's not like the mafia, but just like a group of people who are living together, hiding out, planning crimes, and um, what the morality of those people in that setting would be. And this is the other problem I had with the book, um, is that without telling you, we don't know how much of a criminal Al Hart is. We don't know how deep this runs in his bones, you know. But he seems to be, for the most part, making all the right decisions um, about what you should be doing to be a part of this group. And um, I guess this kind of screws it up a little bit here. But we find out that he's not as bad of a guy as we once were led to believe he was. So him making all these right choices and fooling all these people who, in the story, can't be fooled is um, a bit strange bit of a stretch um i have heard people say that this is where quentin tarantino got the idea for reservoir dogs but i also heard that he got the idea for reservoir dogs from mario baba's rabbit dogs so um i guess if you took both of those things and put them together that that might be reservoir dogs um so that kind of could make sense. So if you like Reservoir Dogs, you might enjoy this book. Um, the other thing is, is that the title revolves around the fact that this big heist they're going to pull happens to land on Friday the 13th. And um, that's Black Friday. And um, some of the people in the group might be very superstitious. So... That causes um, some doubt in their minds and stuff. And when I was reading this, I was just like, oh man, he could have just have easily has call could have called this book Friday the 13th. And then I wonder if he would have called this book Friday the 13th. 
would we have gotten Friday the 13th, the movie franchise? And then I went down a weird what-if rabbit hole where I wondered if the Friday the 13th franchise could have worked as well if it was called Black Friday. And um, I don't think it could have. And then I was just like, then what would have been the 80s? You know? Then it was just Halloween and Phantasm that did good at the end of the 70s. Would we have even got Freddy and Nightmare on Elm Street? Like, man, the whole world would have been a different place if David Goodis just would have named this book Friday the 13th instead of Black Friday. It's a bizarre road to travel down, folks. So anyway, um, all in all, this book was really good. Um, and the relationships built in this was really good. The despair in it was really good. And I've heard people say this book was really depressing. It's, I'm wondering if people say that who don't read this kind of stuff, because it, 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 it it has a downcast nature about it, but it's not depressing. Like, um, I've read way more depressing noir books than this. So, um, and then at the end it gets a little poetic and, um, a little too gushy. And that might be, um, just David Goodis. I have to read more of his stuff. I'm going to be reading Shoot the Piano Player here pretty soon. Um, so I'll see if uh, that's kind of his thing. If you are a fan of his, um, if that's kind of what his tropes are, um, let me know down below so um, I know what to expect in that regard. Um but yeah, if you've read this book, let me know down below what you thought of it. Um, if you have a David Goodis book that you like a lot um, and you want to recommend to me, I would love to hear that. And um, anyway, uh, thanks for hanging out. And I hope you're all well and have a splendid day.